welcome to Mount Zion, where you will have a mountaintop worship experience. To know that God is with you is enough to calm you. Because here it is, God may allow you to go into the furnace, but the truth of the matter is just to know that he can deliver you. He has power to do that or to ease your trouble mind. The book of Matthew, chapter number 6, beginning at verse number 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Jump down to verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you may the Lord add a blessing to the reading the hearing the understanding and application of his word in our lives for this is the word of God for the people of God that he may be glorified. Father, in the name that's above every name, in the name at which every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord, in the name of he who is the word incarnate, wrapped up in flesh and dwelt amongst us, in the name of he who came down from heaven's glory, who healed, who saved and delivered, In the name of he who made ascension back into heaven after three days in the grave and the resurrection, O God. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pause this morning to say thank you. We pause, O God, because we recognize that this is preaching and teaching time. And that being so, O God, your word declares, O God, and you have taught us that it is you who touches the heart of man who draws man. It is you, O God, who are the chief and master shepherd who feeds your sheep. So, O God, I pray that at this time that you would just move feeble me out of the way so that your people will be blessed by thee and not impressed by me. In Jesus' name, what we do not know, teach us. Where we have not been, take us. And what we are not, please, oh God, make us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor, this is Kingdom Seeking 101, part two. Amen. You may be seated in the sanctuary. Kingdom Seeking 101, Part 2. Hallelujah. Anybody bless the name of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Words from wise people guide our lives. Words from wise people. Socrates, he states, the only true wisdom is in knowing what you don't know and knowing that you really know nothing. Jim Elliot once stated, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Wise words guide us through the course of our lives if we make application of those wise words. I loved reading Socrates and I loved Jim Elliot, that, that missionary that was martyred 
for the cause of Christ. And as a result of him giving his life, so many others have followed in the area of being missionaries, wanting to die for the cause of Christ. But before you could travel to the Amazon to die for the cause of Christ, you got to die here first. In other words, you got to realize that life ain't just about you, but it's all about him. Now, you, 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 you may not think much of that. But there are some other wise words that have been left on record that I think will guide us this morning. Here it is, brothers and sisters. We all in this room have, at some point in time, found ourselves worrying about stuff. Being anxious about stuff, about situations in life, and many of which we have no control over. It is said that the majority of things that people worry about never happen in their lives. Some folk worry for 60 and 70 and 80 years about dying. Am I going to die tonight? Am I going to die tonight? Am I going to close my eyes and not wake up in the morning? Some folk worry about not having enough money. Some folk worry about not having the accoutrements of life that make them look like somebody. Over the course of their life, how many things have you worried about just in your lifetime that have never even happened to you? The Bible is very pointed. He's not even talking about extracurricular activities of the mentality as it pertains to things to worry about. He's talking about everyday normatic uh, uh, situations when he says, don't be anxious about food. Don't be anxious about clothes. Don't be anxious about stuff that you need because here it is if you know who you are if you know whose child you are you don't have to worry about can you imagine your child worrying about whether or not they're going to have something to eat when you're their mama when you're their father if you got it even when they're grown and rusty come on now because if that was the case, if you was worried about that, guess what you would have done when they left? You would have taken the key. But the truth of the matter is you allowed them to keep the key because here it is. In life, your child may hit some bumps, some hard spaces as an adult. And when they do, you don't sit there and look at them as, as, a, as, as, as if they, they can't get from you because they grown now. You know why? Because you remember when you was grown. See, we see you today, but there was a point in time in your life where you had to ask for some help. Now, if your child is going to ask anybody for some help, who are they going to ask? They're going to ask daddy and mama. Probably not in that order. <laughs> now, if you got sense enough to help your kid, what about the God you serve? He says, you're my child. How dare you worry about what you're going to eat? Look at how I treat the birds. They ain't clocking in at GM. They, they, they ain't in the unemployment line. They ain't waiting on a handout from, from, no, look at the birds. And, and when you look at the birds, and you got to read this whole entire passage, brothers and sisters, when you get home. But when you look at the birds, you see how I take care of them? You, and you're talking about beauty. Look at the field. Look at all those beautiful flowers out there. Isn't it amazing how you can leave a, a field alone? You ain't got to touch it. And you come back at some point in time in the spring and all of a sudden, here it is, little flowers. Some of y'all call them weeds, little dandelions. But let me tell you, you get a whole field full of dandelions, that's a beautiful thing right there. I take care of making sure the earth is clothed in glory and beauty and splendor. You think I'm going to think more about the earth then I think about the one that I gave the, 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 the duty and charge to name the things of the earth. No, 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 no. 
You think I think more about clothes in the earth than I do of the one who I created in my image and in my likeness? God says, don't get it twisted today. You ain't got to worry about these things. Stop worrying about that. Be not anxious about this stuff. He says, but here it is. Jesus teaches us this message, brothers and sisters, and this lesson about, about how to deal with worry. He says, don't major on the minor. Don't minor on the major. You do know what that means. Majoring on the minor and minoring on the major simply means that you pay too much attention to stuff that don't, des don't deserve your attention to be paid to it. It's like worrying about, is the sun going to come up tomorrow? <laughs> he said, look at your food and your clothing like that. Can you do anything about the sun coming up? Can you do anything about the sun going down? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But what you can do is trust that the God who caused the sun to come up this morning yes. will allow it to come up tomorrow morning. Yes. He says, man, let me tell you how to deal with this thing. He said, you got time. You got time. How much time you got, you don't know. It don't matter. As we talked about yesterday, the word of God teaches us what? It teaches us to ask God to give us, to, to attribute our lives unto, unto uh, 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 counting our days. Numbering our days, I should say. Because to number your days means that you realize that the time I got, I don't have control over it. But the God I serve does. And while I understand that God gives good gifts, a day is a good gift. And so in order for me to show him I appreciate him, I'm going to do what? I'm going to do the best I can with the day he gives. Now, here's the key. Jesus helps us in this passage. He says, instead of worrying about stuff, what you need to do is find yourself fulfilling your day with the right mindset. He says, seek first the kingdom of God. Prioritize the kingdom of God. But let, let, let me back up because this is what I really want to talk about today. Is what does it look like to seek the kingdom of God? What does it look like to seek the kingdom? Does it just simply mean that I find myself reading the Bible every now and then and I got a Bible app that pops up in the morning and one in the evening and I read that scripture and I sit there and say, hmm, that was nice. The word seek means that you are actively pursuing the kingdom of God. You are in a place where your endeavor on a daily basis is to reach and Grab hold of the kingdom to actively be a part of the kingdom, to be active, active in thinking like the king thinks. Because he's the king and it's his domain, his kingdom. Uh, it's amazing to me that when we look in the Old Testament and the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis that God gave Adam dominion over the earth. That dominion means, that word is kingdom. And then we think about how Jesus taught his disciples, brothers and sisters. Here it is in Matthew chapter number 6, verse number 9 through 13. He says, it says, uh, after this manner, therefore pray ye. And in that prayer that Jesus teaches his disciples, he says to them, you need to learn how to pray, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Because as a result of disobedience by way of Adam, the kingdom of God was not active in the earth anymore. Here it is. God's plan is to get what's going on in heaven into the earth. And the way he does that is by doing it through those who he calls his children. In other words, with Jesus, we are heirs and joint heirs. God didn't just drop magically things out of, the, out of the heavens into the earth. No, he uses people. When you got a mindset to seek the kingdom, what you're saying is, God, I want to be one of those people you use to get your 
your, 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 your domain. Because you do realize now, brothers and sisters, I know this is not a, a, a word that we like to use. Because when we use it, we think about a certain group of people. But let me say this. On this earth, we are colonizers. See how quiet I got right there? Because when we think about colonizers, in these here United States, we think of something different. But the truth of the matter is, we are colonizers. We are not of this world. We are in this world. But while we're in this world, we're supposed to affect this world. But you can't affect this world with the same mindset of the world. Okay, let me help you this morning. Look at what Jesus says, brothers and sisters, in Matthew chapter number 5. I told you we're going to do a little, a little tiptoeing through the scriptures this morning. Now, this is what I need you to understand. In chapter number 4 of the book of Matthew... It talks about how it was that Jesus is driven into the wilderness and how it is that he was tempted of the devil and how it was that the devil tempted him with scripture. But you always you already know that when the devil comes to you with scripture, he ain't going to give you all truth. He's going to give you some truth. And the truth that he gives you is going to be used out of context. So in order to fight what he sends your way, you got to know the scripture in context. Yeah, boy, have, let me tell you, have you ever been under a preacher or heard a preacher? I know you ain't been under a preacher in the eight and a half years that have done this. But have you ever heard a preacher that no matter what text he take, it's going to end up in prosperity? Or the, or the scripture going to end up in, you know, how you next in line for a breakthrough? Sometimes you ain't next in line. But what we do know is that in this world, you must suffer. <laughs> what we do know is that there's a yoke that you got to take. What we do know is that there's a cross you got to carry. Now, the shouting good news is when you take the yoke and carry the cross, you ain't carrying it by yourself or under your own power. So here it is. Jesus, in chapter 4, he goes into the wilderness, and he is tempted of the enemy. And after he's tempted and he crushes the enemy, Smacks him around. Let me tell you, 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 can't, you can't come at the word with word. You can't come at, at the word with word because the word knows the word because he is the word. Don't nobody know me better than me. So here it is. The Bible tells us that afterwards he leaves, he's left, or let me say like Satan, the enemy, leaves him. And the angels come and minister to Jesus. They hook him up. He's replenished. And right after that, verse number 17 in chapter number 4, it says, From that time on, Jesus began to preach the kingdom of heaven is, has come near. So why are you saying that, preacher? Because this is what I want you to understand. If it's important for Jesus, it's important for us. So now, what we find is, in order to seek the kingdom of, of heaven, this kingdom of God, in order to seek the kingdom, we got to have the right mindset. Now, the mindset of the world is one thing, but the mindset of God is another. Let me show you what I mean by that. So here it is, in chapter number five, Jesus does what? He preaches the Sermon on the Mount. And now we just read in chapter number four, that he was preaching what? The kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is at hand. It's right here. But here it is. You can't see the kingdom unless you got kingdom eyes. You got to have some kingdom glasses on. You got to be able to, listen, listen. 
My, my nephew that just walked in right there. You was late today, boy. But anyway, my nephew, Jacob, along with his siblings, uh, uh, John, Josh, and Janae, uh, along with KJ, they were all little kids. And I took them to the IMAX theater. And I took them to see a 3D movie. Now, let me tell y'all, uh, just the introduction to the movie will have you messed up. Because here it is, they got these cartoons that would run across the screen, and it looked like they was dropping stuff, and it was falling into the audience, and they were all jumping back. And I'm sitting there cracking up. There was a T-Rex whose head came out of the screen and opened up. You could see down his throat and all his teeth, and they were jumping. They were all little kids. They were jumping. But here it is. They could only get the effect and see what was happening as long as they kept the glasses on. You can only have the effect of the kingdom of God as long as you look through the lens of the word. Now, when you look through the lens of the word, you will be challenged. Let me help you today. How can you be challenged? Look at what Jesus says in verse number. uh, Let's see. Verse verse number 21. Jesus says to those who were listening to him. Uh, he says to those who have gathered around him. Now, he has already preached a show enough sermon by giving the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those uh, are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger. And blessed are the merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, uh, the persecuted for the cause of Christ. He has already blown our wig back with that part of the message. But then he comes in and says, you ain't going to be able to see this. Unless you see this, he says in verse 21, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder or whoever murders will be liable to judgment. He says that's what the old the old law told you. And that's what you heard from those who were the elders of the law, the elders of your families, the elders of your people. That's what you heard. Now, let's be honest today, y'all. We ought to heard some stuff from our folk. Amen? Amen. It ain't all been wrong. It ain't all been right, but it ain't all been wrong. Amen? Amen. Never walk under a ladder because you'll have bad luck. (laughs) Oh, you don't walk under a ladder because you don't want nobody dropping nothing on you. (laughs) If you see a black cat, turn around. Don't split the pole. Step on the crack. Break your mama's back. We done heard some crazy stuff, but we also done heard some stuff. Baby, if you don't save nothing, you ain't going to have nothing. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, listen, uh, my dad gave me a little quip that he would tell us all the time, and I think I shared it with y'all, but he would always say to me as a kid growing up, no, and I'm seven years old, I don't understand that, but he kept saying it, and guess what? I come to find out he knew what he was talking about. He would say, son, let me tell you something. Uh, uh, a hint to the wise. Is sufficient. See, when you wise, you don't need to see the whole thing play out. When you wise, you can say, yep, that's a fool. I'm going this way. But we be like, oh, I can change them. <laughs> Have you ever come close to a fool and it was your choice? You wasted time with a fool? Some of y'all may... <laughs> Okay, since you said, say, if, 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 listen, if you married or yoked up with a fool, what that make you? Anyway. All right. But don't feel bad because we have a prophetic word that comes by way of a song because everybody plays the fool sometimes. There's no exception to the rule. All right, I'm just saying. That ain't in the Bible, so don't try to look it up. Now, I know he said everybody, and I'm looking. I don't see that. That must be the ESV. (laughs) That's the message Bible, everybody. (laughs) But listen, Jesus says, you heard that it was said to those of all, you should not commit murder, and whoever murders will be liable of judgment. But I say to you, that everyone who is angry with his brother 
will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother, hallelujah, has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your, try your best to get it straight. Then come and offer your gift. In other words, don't, don't come to me thinking I'm just going to look beyond. Let me tell you what old folk used to say, them old Pentecostal uh, mothers used to say, God don't bless over mess. Can't go acting a fool and then think you're going to come in and just shout because yeah, you, you know how to pick them up and put them down and clap on the twos and fours and bob your head when you clap and know that when you, when you give your testimony, I want to praise, give praise, honor, and glory to Jesus Christ who is my Lord and Savior and who is the head of my life. You know the dip on head of my life. Just because you know that stuff or you know to bow down with the one chair in front of the church and, and pray uh, as only a deacon can pray. Now, God, I come before you as an empty pitcher before a full fountain. I come as empty as I am, as humble as I know how. And when it's all over, God, and I put my sword in the sands of time and we come before you to trouble war no more. Please receive me into your kingdom where I can shout and have howdy, howdy, and never good. Just because you know all that stuff don't mean you right. Or if you that deacon that know uh, the words to the song that don't nobody else know. Just because you know church stuff doesn't mean you saved. But you need to know church stuff. That don't make you saved. Listen to this. He says, truly I say, you will never get out until you have paid the last bit. He said, listen, man, when you, have, when you have gone through that, when you get in the court with people and you owe folk, don't try to just smooth over that stuff. This is kingdom mindset because world mindset is if I can get by. Okay, kingdom mindset. Verse 27, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. I want to hear some amens on that. I don't want no wells. Well, no, I don't want that. I want some amens. I have heard it, Rev. That's right, I heard it. You've heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed. Now, notice what he said. Looks at a woman with lustful intent. I thank God I'm married to the woman I'm married to. You ain't got to say amen. I'm going to say amen for myself. A to the man. And the reason why is because we were friends before we got married. We were friends for a long time. I met her when I was eight. She was nine. Amen. I spied out the land. I said, absolutely, and for certain. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I love my baby. But let me tell you something. One of the things I love about her, this is personal for me and her. I can talk to her. I can see a, a fine woman and be like, dang, she fine. She looks great. She can see a fine woman. and she, My wife ain't no way funny at all. And be like, that's a good-looking woman. Oh, and she keep it together. We can talk like that. Because let me tell you, one thing she knows is when I'm looking at her, when I'm looking at that woman, I'm not saying, ooh. <laughs> now let me help you, brothers. If you can't look at a woman and not lust, don't look. It's better to pluck your eyes out. Put you some of them shades on they give you when you get, when you get cataracts or whatever that is. Get some of them black glasses that wrap around. 
But because your heart ain't right, you still going to see her in your head. I know. So you got to ask God to work with you on that. He said, man, you, 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 you can't look at a woman with lust because he says, you've already committed adultery in your heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out, throw it away. But it's better that you lose one of your members than that you, your whole body, be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body go to hell. He said, man, if you, if you can't help but go in the right aid with, and, and always looking for the five finger discount, come out of there with five and six toothbrushes up your sleeve. You can't help but every time you look around, you borrowing stuff, finding stuff. It's better that you cut your hand off and you make it to the kingdom than for you to go to hell because, yo, I can't help myself. You can help yourself. Let me, let me tell you how I know you can help yourself. If you're a thief, right? Let's say you're a thief. And, and they say, you know, why do you do it? I can't help myself. And if somebody else is a thief, and they bring them in front of you and lay their hand down on the table and chop that arm off, guess what will happen to you miraculously? <laughs> Isn't it amazing how you can get cured <laughs> with all that screaming and hollering and blood squirting everywhere? He says, it was also said, verse number 31, it was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. Whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. He said, I'm trying to tell you, you did that because, again, this is a patriarchal society. That I meant men ruled everything. Men made all, the, all of the rules or whatever. And so here it is. A man could come home and say, I don't want to be married to her no more because I don't want to be married to her no more. She can't do what she used to do. She don't look the way she used to look. And as long as he gave her a, a written piece of paper of divorcement, it was legal. But let me tell you all something. Everything that's legal in the world ain't legal in the spirit. Just because the judge signed off on it don't mean the judge signs off on it. In other words, what Jesus is trying to get us to understand is don't enter into marriage real uh, lighthearted. Well, if this don't work out, I'll just give me another one. There's people that think that way and they teach their kids that way. That's why I've always been so adamant with my children that when you get married, you need to understand that this thing is forever. I'll tell you something about marriage. You talk about sanctification. Being married to somebody will show enough show sanctification in your life because what sanctification is, God using life in order to carve you into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. And let me tell you, it's nothing like being yoked up to somebody that is the closest to you than anybody else in this world that will what? That will cause you to say, Lord, have mercy. That's what my wife has to do with, deal with me. I'm sure I got her saying, Lord, have mercy. But see, when we got married, I remember the pastor, and I do this, I use this in premarital counseling as well. The pastor asked me, and he asked Courtney, he says, Courtney, what's the worst thing about Kevin? And she told him, I ain't gonna tell y'all what she said. <laughs> and then he said, Kevin, what's the worst thing about Courtney? And I told him, the worst thing that I saw, I saw nothing that was the worst because. She's like a heaven, an angel that flown down from heaven. And I don't know what I said. I said something. But anyway, he said, let me ask you something. 
What if that don't change? He said, matter of fact, what if it get worse? Are you willing to be yoked up for the rest of your life if it don't change? Because a lot of times we marry people thinking we're going to change them. The reason why they, they haven't, a, you know, the reason why they are the way they are is because I've not been there. And now that I'm here, it's going to change. What if it don't change? What if it don't? The reason why he sleep around is because I ain't been in it. You you don't have the power to change anybody but yourself. See, when you take the divorce word off the table from the beginning, no matter what, I don't care how crazy you get, how crazy I get, we ain't getting no divorce. Now, what would make you say that? You got to have a kingdom mindset. The kingdom mindset says, I recognize and realize that marriage is a portrait on the earth of the picture of the relationship between Christ and the church. He wants the, what's going on in heaven to show up on earth. And as a result, he gives marriage. And so at what point in time is Christ, who is the bridegroom, ever going to divorce the church that that is the bride? Never. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us that he covers her. Man. Man. And what is the bride to the bridegroom? She's a help meet. He's the head, we're the body. We complement one another. He says, man, you've heard that it was said of old, you should not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, don't, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is the footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black on my life, on my mama life. Let what you say simply be yes or no, for anything more than this comes from evil. Let me tell you something. We, we have to be so careful, y'all. This is going to mess up a whole lot. Don't leave the church, please, when I say this. Please don't leave. Y'all laughing, but I'm telling you, I know few folks who have left churches behind this statement right here. I tell our young people, when you go away to college, don't join fraternities and sororities. I know we got sorrows and frats in here, but you got to be careful with that stuff. Even when it comes to lodges and all of that stuff, when they got you swearing stuff to other idols, ISIS and all of these different things, let me tell you what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you to function in their kingdom, whereas they become more important to you than even your relationship with Christ. Oh, no, we do some real community, you know, beneficial things to the community. I know that. But that's what you call the overlay for the underplay. Because at the end of the day, what Jesus is teaching us in this passage is this world is all about you getting your mindset on the things of the world. And as long as your mind is on the things of the world, you can't have a mind on the things of God. Because man will either serve one or the other. What I'm trying to tell you is walk lightly. Tread lightly. Ask God to guide you. Don't take it because pastor said it. Take it because the word, you just read that. And so now that when we read it, when we read the word of God, that ain't even a bother to Satan. It's not. I'm not going to get to it today. But if you had been a part of Bible study uh, just the other day, along with uh, when I taught this some time ago, it talked, we talked about the soils. 
the parable of the soils. And in the parable of the soils, what we find is that when the seed was scattered on all four different kinds of soils, what we find is that only one of them took root and brought forth a, a harvest. The other, you know, word came and because the word is the seed, the heart is the soil. The other, the word came and uh, one was so hard it didn't even get a chance to take root. You know, and then another, here it is, uh, it took a little root, but it wasn't deep enough. And so it, it dried up and the sun came out and all that kind of stuff. Birds flew and took, but then there was one that took root. And here it is. What we find is that Satan is not concerned about you hearing the word. He's not concerned about you reading the word. He, he, don't, he don't care about that because there's a lot of folk that read and hear the word. What he is upset about is when you start understanding the word. So you can sit in church and come and use it as a check mark for your week. He don't care about that. But I was watching church on Facebook and, you know, I watched all the videos. He don't care about that. What he cares about is when you start understanding the word. Because when you understand the word, then what happens is God gives even more to you. You don't believe me? Okay, y'all. Uh, chapter number 13. Let me, let, let, let me do this real quick. I did not plan to do this. Chapter number 13, verse number, I'm going to start, let me start here, Lord have mercy, I didn't, I meant to preach today, I ain't mean to do a bunch of teaching, but since we're here, verse number 10, let's just start there. Now this is after the parable of the sower, look at what Jesus says, then the disciples said to them, to him, why do you speak it to them in parables? And he answered them, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it has not been given. For to one who has, more will be given. And he will have an abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, you will indeed hear but never understand. You will indeed see but never perceive, for the people's heart have grown dull, and with their eyes they can barely hear with their ears they can barely hear, and their eyes they have closed. Left, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I found, and I would heal them. Listen to this. What he's saying in this passage, look at, look at what he, how, he, how he puts this. He says, what they have, the ones who have, they will receive an abundance. The ones who have not, what they have will be taken. How is it that you're going to take what I don't have? God, how can you take what I don't have? Let me tell you what, what happens, brothers and sisters. He says, there are people who don't want to know no better. They don't want to know. They, wanna, they don't want to come closer to God. They don't want to experience his presence. They don't want to see the kingdom of heaven at hand. They don't want to see that. What they want is something that they can ear hustle with, something that they can gab about, or something that they can sit back and pontificate. I heard what he said, but this is what I really think he meant. I, don't, I, don't, that, I just don't get that. I don't understand none of that. You know why you don't understand? Because you don't want to understand. How can I prove that? He said those who listen. He says those who have. God not going to say those who have. If you can't get, he says, seek, you'll find, knock, 
The door will be open. Ask. It will be given unto you. He says this and he says in, in, in this whole passage, he's trying to get us to have a kingdom mindset. Back to chapter number six. Chapter six. I'm sorry, chapter five. I apologize. I apologize. Chapter five. He said, you heard about swearing falsely, but I'm telling you, don't even swear. He said, You've heard that it was said, verse number 38, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. If they did it to me, I'm going to do it back to them. But I say to you, do not resist the one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you, and take, you to, to take your tunic. Let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who begs from you. Do not refuse the one who will borrow from you. Lord, have mercy. Tell me that ain't hard. Because it seems like the one that borrowed from you is the one that always... I'm going to close out because it got quiet in here today. <laughs> I told y'all earlier to live holy is going to challenge us all. Amen. I don't want to do all this stuff. I want to want to do it. I want to want to do it. Sometimes I don't want to do it. Okay. He says, you've heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. He said, but man, resist. He says, do not resist. The one who is evil. But if anyone slaps you on your right cheek. Now this is more so, I believe, based upon the reading of this. And I'm still studying this too. But I believe this is talking about not only a physical slap. But I believe he's talking about the fact that there are instances in your life where people, they, they jack up your, 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 uh, uh, the integrity of your life. They go and spread stuff. They, oh, it's a slap. But what he's saying is just because they lied on you don't mean you should go lie on them. Amen. How people do you, you don't necessarily do it back to them. So you can say, Dang, I ain't no punk. No, he's saying, no, 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 no. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to just say, you know what, hey, whatever. God bless them. God, okay, let, let, let me keep moving. Verse number 43, he says, You have heard it that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and, ha and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his son, S-U-N, rise on the evil and on the good, on the just and the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more do you have or what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You're, you, therefore, must, perfect, uh, must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Listen, y'all. He says, your life as a follower of Christ, if you have the will for the heaven or for uh, the kingdom of heaven to be seen on earth, you got to go further than what you've been going. You got to have a desire to, to, to have God live in you and be seen in this world. You can't allow the world and the things that happen to you to frame or give you a reference for how you're going to respond to life. He says, I'm telling you how to respond before it happens to you. 
every one of us in this room will be challenged in our lives. It'll be challenged from people close to you and from some people who don't even know you. But we can't wait until life happens before we figure out how to respond. Because if we do, we won't have the same victory that Jesus had. When the enemy came to him and says, it is written. Oh, let me see what's written. Let me, let me, let me, let me find out what's written. No, no, no. You got to be prepared before the day shows up. It's coming. Look at your neighbor and say, it's coming. I'll tell you what else is coming. The end of the sermon. The end of the sermon. You've heard. But I say. You've heard, but I say. That's what Jesus said. You gonna follow what you heard from others? Or are we gonna follow what we heard from him? Somebody say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Father God, we thank you today. On behalf of Pastor Kevin B. Mack and the Mount Zion Church family, we would like to say thank you for tuning in. We hope that you have been blessed by something you have seen or heard today. Please stay connected to us through all of our social platforms. You can find us on our website at www.mtzecourse.org. You could also search for us on Facebook by searching for Mount Zion eCourse. You could also connect with us on Instagram at mtzecourse. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this page.